my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And what do we do? Well, we provide mentoring and training services for, for different mechanical engineering codes. And we provide equipment certification and re-rating services as well. We'd be pleased to help you. So let's continue with our slides. Welcome back to our continuing studies of part three, Brittle Fracture Assessment, episode four. And in this episode, we are going to continue our examples of level one assessments because API 579.2 has quite a few uh, examples. So we're going through them one by one. And uh, this one in particular is called example 3.4, further reduction checks. That's the, that's the talk. So, so there's another, uh, uh, another section um, that they add on that you can, can if you need to get uh, the, a lower mat temperature, there is a way to do a further reduction checks with, with level one and not necessarily have to go to level two to, to, to achieve that. So uh, let's dive into that. In example 3.4 and have a look at what's given to us for this level one MAT evaluation of a, of a shell section of a pressure vessel. So in this case, we have a stripper column. So it's a vertical vessel and um, it was constructed to ASME Section 8, Division 1 of the Boiler Pressure Vessel Code. The materials of construction is SA 516, Grade 65. And uh, that's an older material, 1968. And the allowable stresses are 16 to 40 as per the code of that time and the material specs given at that time period. So what else do we could we find out? Well, the inside diameter is 90 inches. The thickness is one inch, 25 millimeters. And the CET is 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus seven. We want to perform a level one mat, of course. And the next thing we're given is the operating pressure uh, of that particular point on the vessel is at 240 PSIG. So we have a post weld heat treated vessel and there is no impact testing data available. Go through the, the procedures that are outlined in API 579.1 or the Ask Me FFS-1. And we'll start with step one. We have to make a decision about, you know, the type of analysis we're going to do. The, the, the option A is the governing thiction, thickness and the exemption curves. The second one is called impact testing. And we mentioned that in the last few videos. And in this particular case, we're going to use the governing thickness and exemption curves. When we start level one, we just want to remind ourselves where we're trying to go with this. So our critical exposure temperature given to us by the process team, uh, CET, must be greater than the minimum allowable temperature, the MAT, for that given component. in step 1.1 to determine MAT using the governing thickness and exemption rules. So the first thing we'll look at is, yes, we're following boiler pressure vessel code section eight division one or two, so it's confirmed. Also, we confirm that the allowable stress is equal to or less than 172 megapascals or 25 KSI. And that's confirmed because we have this material of the 516 grade 65 is 16.4 KSI. So we're, we're good. T 
continue on to step 1.2, determine the uncorroded corroded governing thickness, okay? And so the nominal uncorroded thickness for a vessel is one inch or 25 millimeters thick. The second thing is we check, okay, we're not working on formed heads because otherwise we would be using the minimum thickness when it's not applicable. Also, uh, we don't have a piping component, we have a shell, but other, if we did, then we would be subtracting the mill tolerance. So let's continue on here, material toughness. So what can we say about that? Well, we use table 3.2 and we, we use curve B. Remember there from previous videos, there's four basic curves, A, B, C, D. And the material toughness curve, we gotta go to figure 3.4 to do our checks. And then if there's no information available, we're supposed to go and use curve A. 1.4 to determine our mat. So we, of course, we go again to figure 3.4. API reminds us a few times. And uh, we don't have flanches, so otherwise we could use exemption curves, not applicable in our case. And, uh, you know, if the part is very thin, then we can get all automatic uh, credit to minus 48 degrees centigrade, minus 55 Fahrenheit. We, if we had nuts, then we would get, uh, you know, minus 48. But again, this is NA not applicable. Jump to our curve figure 3.4. We have our thickness of one inch. We go all the way up to curve B. And then we go across and we get a curve B governing thickness based on one. Our mat is... 31 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 0.5 degrees centigrade. And, and uh, there's a metric version of this curve available. We're gonna invoke, try to invoke 1.5 to get further MAT reduction checks, which is the whole point of this exercise. So as me, uh, P1 materials, group one, or group one, P1, two materials. Um, do we have this to do a, a level one assessment? Yes. And uh, if you want to figure out which P material you have, you can refer to ASME Boiler Pressure Vessel Code, section nine, table QW. QB42 for ferrous materials. And that's how you can find out what what P material you require. The wall thickness is less than one, one and a half inch, so we can we can do this assessment. And uh, there was post-weld heat treating and no subsequent work. So we, we are post-weld heat treated vessel, our thickness is right, we're following the right material class. So therefore we can go and do a level one assessment. So as a result, we can get from step 1.4, we can subtract 17 degrees centigrade or 30 and get our adjusted MAT to one degree Fahrenheit to 17. So the level one assessment allows you some, some breathing room to, to get a little bit more if you've got all the, the right uh, checks, and, checks in place. Some conclusions here. So the first step is we determined from the material we were given at A516 grade 65 that uh, from the tables that it was a B curve. So then we went to table 3.4 or 3.4 M for metric and we determined the mat of 31 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 0.5 centigrade. And this is, has established for a a pressure vessel without any uh, allowance for post well heat treat. Now, if we wanted to take advantage of it because we needed to drop our our mat below our, our CET, then we would do some more analysis. So we determined from, um, from ASME that our material was considered to be a P1 group 
one steel. And therefore, with those other criteria, we were able to uh, establish uh, an allowance like a, a reduction in format of 30 degrees to cent Fahrenheit and, or minus 17 centigrade. And so we establish a new mat of one degree Fahrenheit and, or minus 17. Okay. So we reminded when you look back, we were given the CET we needed to achieve was 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus seven. And the good news is that our CET is greater than our mat because we took advantage of our, um, our post weld heat treating and we are successful. So this vessel is past the level one assessment. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.